confide in me Light and joy and peace abide in me My sinlessness is guaranteed by God Light and joy and peace abide in me My sinlessness is guaranteed by God Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. <laughs> Isn't that something? The relationship between light and joy and peace and our sinlessness. And it's guaranteed. Our sinlessness, our innocence is guaranteed by God. That's how he always sees us. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm Miracle Willie, forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks, and we're ready for Lesson 93 in A Course in Miracles workbook for students from the publication Foundation for Inner Peace is the publisher of the version we're reading out of. Lesson 93, Light and Joy and Peace Abide in Me, here on March the 2nd of 2024. Light and joy and peace abide in me. You think you are the home of evil, darkness, and sin. You think if anyone could see the truth about you, he would be repelled, recoiling from you as if from a poisonous snake. <laughs> you think if what is you think if what is true about you were revealed to you, you would be struck with horror so intense that you would rush to death by your own hand, living on after seeing this being impossible. So for all you people that have come from that world where you've been instructed that you're a miserable sinner deserving of hell or death, cheer up. There's another way of seeing things, the way God sees things. These are beliefs so firmly fixed that it is difficult to help you see that they are based on nothing. That you have made mistakes is obvious. That you have sought salvation in strange ways, have been deceived, deceiving, and afraid of foolish fantasies and savage dreams, and have bowed down to idols made of dust. All this is true by what you now believe. Today we question this. Today we question this. Not from the point of view of what you think, but from a very different reference point from which such idle thoughts are meaningless. These thoughts are not according to God's will. These weird beliefs he does not share with you. This is enough to prove that they are wrong, but you do not perceive that this is so. But you do not perceive that this is so. Why would you not be overjoyed to be assured that all the evil that you think you did was never done, that all your sins are nothing, that you are as pure and holy as you were created, and that light and joy and peace abide in you. <clears throat> Let's read that sentence again. It's a long sentence, but look what it says. Why would you not be overjoyed to be assured that all the evil that you think you did was never done? It was a dream. Oh, it might seem real in the dream, and for the dreamer, it's it's real. But that doesn't make it any realer than if it was uh, the fact that it's a dream that we're going to wake up from. So let's hasten that day of awakening by doing our lesson. Why would you not be overjoyed to be assured that all the evil that you think you did was never done, that all your sins are nothing, that you are as pure and holy as you were created, and that light and joy and peace abide in you? Your image of yourself cannot withstand the will of God. You think that this is death, but it is life. You think you are destroyed, but you are saved. The self you made is not the Son of God. Therefore, the self does not exist at all. And anything it seems to do and think means nothing. It is neither bad nor good. It is unreal and nothing more than that. It does not battle with the Son of God. It does not hurt him nor attack his peace. It has not changed creation nor reduced eternal sinlessness to sin and love to hate. 
what power can this self you made possess when it would contradict the will of God? <laughs> Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Over and over, this must be repeated until it is accepted. It is true. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Over and over, this must be repeated until it is accepted. It is true. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Nothing can touch it or change what God created as eternal. The self you made, evil and full of sin, is meaningless. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God, and light and joy and peace abide in you. Salvation requires the acceptance of but one thought. You are as God created you, not what you made of yourself. Whatever evil you may think you did, you are as God created you. Whatever mistakes you made, the truth about you is unchanged. Creation is eternal and unalterable. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. You are and will forever be exactly as you were created. Light and joy and peace abide in you because God put them there. In our longer exercise periods today, which would be most profitable if done for the first five minutes of every waking hour, begin by stating the truth about your creation. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Then put away your foolish self-images and spend the rest of the practice period in trying to experience what God has given you in place of what you have decreed for yourself. Then put away your foolish self-images and spend the rest of the practice period in trying to experience what God has given you in place of what you have decreed for yourself. <laughs> You are what God created, or what you made. One self is true, the other is not there. Try to experience the unity of your one self. Try to appreciate its holiness and the love from which it was created. Try not to interfere with the self which God created as you by hiding its majesty behind the tiny idols of evil and sinfulness you have made to replace it. Let it come into its own. Here you are. This is you. And light and joy and peace abide in you because this is so. You may not be willing or even able to use the first five minutes of each hour for these exercises. Try, however, to do so when you can. At least remember to repeat these thoughts each hour. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Then try to devote at least a minute or so to closing your eyes and realizing that this is a statement of the truth about yourself. If a situation arises that seems to be disturbing, quickly dispel the illusion of fear by repeating these thoughts again. Should you be tempted to become angry with someone, tell him silently, Light and joy and peace abide in you. <laughs> Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. What's good for you, that's good for everybody. You can do much for the world's salvation today. You can do much today to bring you closer to the part in salvation that God has assigned to you. And you can do much today to bring the conviction to your mind that the idea for the day is true indeed. So he wants us to take five minutes of every waking hour. And if you can't do it, he says, well, at least say the idea every hour. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. And if you can, close your eyes for at least, you know, for, a, for whatever time you can. Unless you're driving or doing something, you know, that you can't really close your eyes at the moment. But still, don't, don't miss an opportunity every hour or even off more often, to tell yourself. It needs repeating over and over, he says. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My, my sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Okay, well, let's go look at our text reading for today. 
and we are in the middle of, and we're in chapter 11, God or the ego, and we, we left off on paragraph 11, so we'll pick up there in just a moment. While you're doing there, let's see what's, what's going on around the world today. Um, Pasqua, Florida today, and what is Pasqua, Florida? Well, it's, it's Spanish for the Feast of Flowers or Easter Flowers annual celebration of Juan Ponce de Leon's arrival in Florida in 1513 near St. Augustine. Um, so that, that word um, Pasca is like Easter and flowers, but he landed in April, so they make this uh, the second day in a uh, April uh, Pasca Florida Day in remembrance of Flowers for Florida and uh, Ponce de Le Leon, Ponce de Leon's uh, arrival, and you know he must have seen a lot of flowers when he showed up. I'm I'm thinking uh, Reconciliation Day or National Reconciliation Day in the United States. Nice day to practice forgiveness, and we're learning how to do it. You know when someone tempts you to be angry. Or when you remember a, a, a fault, leave your altar. You leave your gift at the altar. Jesus said, "Go make make things right with your brother. Then come offer your gift, because it's the making things right with your brother that is the gift." And you can say to them today, "Light and joy and peace abide in you. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. And see them that way. Be reconciled to what you had previously been separated from." because of guilt, because of sin. And Ramadan continues. Okay, and I'm sitting in front of a wild plum, or also known as a wild goose plum, or a goose plum, a Prunus Americana. Uh, it has bitter skin on the little, they're small little fruits, and bitter skin, so they're not real tasty for just eating. You can spit, spit the uh, pulp out. But uh, but the 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 meat in it is is tasty, and a lot of people make jams and jellies out of it. When you, when you go through the the strainer, the seeds and the um, the skin stay on on stay out of the jelly after you've cooked it down and then squeeze it through a colander. Uh, okay, uh, anyway, but and then uh, in edible landscaping, we have the. Uh, me, uh, the Weber American Persimmon, and it is a uh, Diaspirus virginiana. Weber came to us from Alabama. It is an early ripening native persimmon with an enjoyable flavor, flavor and deep orange, almost red flesh. The fruits are larger than most native persimmons and ripen well before frost. Space 15 foot circle, zone 6 through 8, and perhaps even to zone 5. You'd want a protected area in zone 5. And then in uh, Permaculture for Beginners by Carrie Mitchell, this next paragraph is uh, Edge Effect. Uh, we've established that the borders between systems are particularly fertile places and that this fact can be exploited for greater yields. Although guilds work on this principle, they are generally placed as self-contained niches and therefore limited in their potential. If you design the placement of guilds such that their edges transition in areas as abundant in resources that benefit both sets of elements, you can significantly increase the edge effect principle. The key is to recognize what would be naturally successful boundary between elements and then design the feature so that you can implement a targeted system that maximizes the natural growth opportunities you have spotted. Again, it is not your objective to fight nature, but rather to harness its process by creating more organized versions of systems that would naturally occur in certain locations. The edge effect. Okay, now, paragraph 11, and certainly take with you today, light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. In the ego's goal of autonomy, oh, if the ego's goal of autonomy could be accomplished, God's purpose could be defeated, and this is impossible. Oh, and this is in paragraph 11 of, 
of section uh, five, the dynamics of the ego uh, in chapter 11, God or the ego. If the ego's goal of autonomy could be accomplished, God's purpose could be defeated. And this is impossible. Only by learning what fear is can you finally learn to distinguish the possible from the impossible and the false from the true. According to the ego's teaching, its goal can be accomplished and God's purpose cannot. According to the Holy Spirit's teaching, only God's purpose can be accomplished. And it is accomplished already. <laughs> God is, in paragraph 12, God is as dependent on you as you are on him because his autonomy encompasses yours and is therefore incomplete without it. You can only establish your autonomy by identifying with him and fulfilling your function as it exists in truth. The ego believes that to accomplish its goal is happiness, but it is given you to know that God's function is yours. And happiness cannot be found apart from your joint will. Recognize only that the ego's goal, which you have pursued so diligently, has merely brought you fear, and it becomes difficult to maintain that fear is happiness. Upheld by fear, this is what the ego would have you believe. Yet God's Son is not insane and cannot believe it. Let him but recognize it, and he will not accept it. For only the insane would choose fear in place of love, and only the insane could believe that love can be gained by attack. But the sane realized that only attack could produce fear, from which the love of God completely protects them. But Again on that sentence, But the sane realized that only attack could produce fear from which the love of God completely protects them. 13. The ego analyzes. The Holy Spirit accepts. The appreciation of wholeness comes only through acceptance, for to analyze means to break down or to separate out. The attempt to understand totality by breaking it down is clearly the characteristically contradictory approach of the ego to everything. The ego believes that power, understanding, and truth lie in separation, and to establish this belief, it must attack. Unaware that the belief cannot be established, and obsessed with the conviction that separation is salvation, the ego attacks everything it perceives by breaking it into small disconnected parts without meaningful relationships and therefore without meaning. The ego will always substitute chaos for meaning, for if separation is salvation, harmony is threat. Wow. 14. The ego's interpretation of the laws of perception are and would have to be the exact opposite of the Holy Spirit's. The ego focuses on error and overlooks truth. It makes real every mistake it perceives and with characteristically circular reasoning concludes that because of the mistake, consistent truth must be meaningless. The next step then is obvious. If consistent truth is meaningless, inconsistency must be true. Oh my, the upside down world the ego makes. Holding error clearly in mind, and protecting what it has made real, the ego proceeds to the next step in its thought system. Error is real, and truth is error. <laughs> 15. The ego makes no attempt to understand this, and it is clearly not understandable, but the ego does not make ev but the ego does make every attempt to demonstrate it, and this it does constantly. Again on that sentence, the ego makes no attempt to understand this upside down reasoning that it comes to, that error is real and truth is error. The ego makes no attempt to understand this, and it is clearly not understandable. But the ego does make every attempt to demonstrate it, and this it does constantly. 
analyzing to attack meaning, the ego succeeds in overlooking it and is left with a series of fragmented perceptions which it unifies on behalf of itself. This then becomes the universe it perceives, and it is this universe which, in turn, becomes its demonstration of its own reality. See, the, the demonstration of the ego's idea is that that you are sin, that sin is real, and that light and joy and peace are not in you. <laughs> Paragraph 16. Do not underestimate the appeal of the ego's demonstrations to those who would listen. Selective perception chooses its witnesses carefully, and its witnesses are consistent. The case for insanity is strong to the insane, for reasoning ends at its beginning, and no thought system transcends its source. Yet reasoning without meaning cannot demonstrate anything, and those who are convinced by it must be deluded. Can the ego teach truly when it overlooks truth? Can it perceive what it has denied? Its witnesses do attest to its denial, but hardly to what it has denied. The ego looks straight at the father and does not see him, for it has denied his son. 17. Would you remember the father? Accept his son and you will remember him. Nothing can demonstrate that his son is unworthy, for nothing can prove that a lie is true. What you see of his son through the eyes of the ego is a demonstration that his son does not exist. Yet where the son is, the father must be. Accept what God does not deny, and it will demonstrate its truth. The witnesses for God stand in his light and behold what he created. Their silence is the sign that they have beheld God's son, and in the presence of Christ, they need demonstrate nothing, for Christ speaks to them of himself and of his Father. They are silent because Christ speaks to them, and it is his words they speak. And last paragraph, 18. Every brother you meet becomes a witness for Christ or for the ego, be depending on what you perceive in him. That's why we want this to be a reconciliation day. See the Christ in everyone. Be able to say sincerely, Namaste, I see God in you, and I honor, the, honor God. Everyone convinces you of what you want to perceive and of the reality of the kingdom you have chosen for your vigilance. Everything you perceive is a witness to the thought system you want to be true. Every brother has the power to release you if you choose to be free. Every brother has the power to release you if you choose to be free. You cannot accept false witness of him unless you have evoked false witness against him. If he speaks not of Christ to you, you spoke not of Christ to him. You hear but your own voice, and if Christ speaks through you, you will hear him. Okay, let's go back and look at our text reading, and let's just take a quick review so you'll know what to meditate on or what, how to do your practice period today uh, in Lesson 93. In our longer exercise periods today, which would be most profitable if done for the first five minutes of every waking hour, begin by stating the truth about your creation. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Then put away your foolish self-images and spend the rest of the practice period in trying to experience what God has given you in place of what you have decreed for yourself. You are what God created or what you made. One self is true and the other is not. Try to experience the unity of your one self. Try to appreciate its holiness and the love from which it was created. Try not to interfere with the self which God created as you by hiding its majesty behind the tiny idols of evil and sinfulness you have made to replace it. Let it come into its own. Here you are. This is you. And light and joy and peace abide in you because it is because this is so. 
You may not be willing or even able to use the first five minutes of each hour for these exercises. Try, however, to do so when you can. At least remember to repeat these thoughts each hour. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Then try to devote at least a minute or so to closing your eyes and realizing that this is a statement of the truth about you. And if you can't close your eyes, don't do so, but try. Try to take five minutes at the top of every hour. But if you can't, at least have a moment to remember this idea. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. If a situation arises that seems to be disturbing, quickly dispel the illusion of fear by repeating these thoughts again. Should you be tempted to become angry with someone, tell him silently, light and joy and peace abide in you. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. You can do much for the world's salvation today. You can do much today to bring you closer to the part in salvation that God has assigned to you. And you can do much today to bring the conviction to your mind that the idea for the day is true indeed. Okay, well, I think you know what to do. Try to pause every hour today. And then, uh, and, and you know, he's, you don't have to have any long practice periods, but lots of little quick ones is what he's saying. Uh, at least for a minute, if possible, try for five minutes and tell yourself, Light and joy and peace abide in me. 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 My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. And if anyone seems to be able to tempt you to uh, hold a grievance, say to them, Light and joy and peace abide in you. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Light and joy and peace abide in me. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today. And let's go another day on our Assyrian and our Aramaic word for peace, spoken in Turkey. Syria, Iraq, and Iran. Let's send light to that, that part of the world as we say, Shlama. Light and joy and peace abide in us, for our sinlessness is guaranteed by God. Shlama.